Uh, from Curtin University, please welcome Kate Putnam. And she'll be talking to us about high power impulse micron transpotting and its applications. The traditional floor is yours. Uh, thank you for your introduction. Um, yes, so I'll be talking about uh, manufacturing thin films using high-powered impulse magnetron sputtering, or IPIMS for short. Uh, so, in depositing thin films, uh, they, you can typically do this using chemical vapour deposition or physical vapour deposition. Uh, so, HIPIMS is a physical vapour deposition technique. And for anyone unfamiliar with physical vapour deposition, I um, just want to show some uh, commercial examples. So for semiconductors and data storage, um, the image here is a, a hard disk. Uh, it's also used in optical coating. So we've got a, a telescope mirror, um, a camera lens with a UV um, transmission filter and an anti-reflexive coating. And for hard coatings, such as carbide coated you know, tools or um, razor blades. So there are a number of um, you know, commercially viable physical vapor deposition techniques. And the reason for choosing one over the other would just be based on what kind of a film it can produce. Um, so a good way to illustrate this is using this diagram from Andre Anders, which looks at the factors that govern the, the types of films you can grow. So along the y-axis, we've got reduced temperature and along the x-axis, um, reduced uh, deposition energy and then uh, film thickness for the z-axis. So moving along the uh, in the low energy regime, uh, moving along the temperature axis, you go from a, 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 a loosely packed fibrous film uh, right up to something that's more densely packed in, in polycrystalline. And so although you can increase the density of a film by increasing the temperature at which you grow it, um, you're still going to get in this low energy range, you're still going to get um, grain boundaries which can potentially um, leave your film susceptible to volatiles and, and perhaps um, ultimately weaken it. So if you want to improve um, your film quality and density, you typically need to move up in the energy regime. Uh, so for the different techniques, they can all access that temperature uh, range uh, because you can simply heat a substrate while you're depositing. So they, they're typically separated by the energy axes. So for the evaporation, is the lower energy technique. Um, and it's good because it's very cheap, um, it's easy, but it does, it is a sort of um, the most impure of the, of the uh, physical vapor deposition techniques. Um, and you can't access uh, a very high energy. The uh, so ion beam deposition is, is good for higher energy deposition, um, but it's typically, uh, only really useful in a small scale and you don't really access that lower energy if that's what you wanted. So DC magnetron sputtering is a very popular technique. It, it scales up very well, so it's very good for um, commercial applications. Um, it's quite reliable, it's got a good deposition rate, but there still is a limit on the energy range. And, and high PIMS is essentially a special case of DC magnetron sputtering. It's the same technology, just using a special power supply. And the great thing about that is that you're able to access, you know, theoretically, that entire energy region. So considering that, um, the, you know, the difference is just a power supply, if we think first about DC magnetron sputtering, um, on the left, you see a typical schematic of a DC magnetron sputtering system. So you've got a cathode, which is some target material that you want to create a film out of. Um, and below that are some permanent magnets. Now, when you apply a voltage to that target, you strike a plasma, the magnets act to trap the plasma very close to the target, making it very dense. And that's the ideal situation um, for controlling your film growth uh, because a a dense plasma gives you um, a high electron density. And as we can see here, this graph on the right hand side, uh, when you increase the electron density, you're increasing the ionization flux fraction. And the reason you want an ionized plasma is so that you can control the microstructure using um, perhaps a substrate bias, as is shown here at the top, 
So you're applying a substrate bias to your whatever you're growing the film on. This allows you to control the energy of whatever is incoming. In, in a DC system, you know, if you want to increase the um, if you want to increase the density of the plasma, you just increase the power. But this is limited by a thermal load on the target. Okay, so essentially, at some point, you, you can increase the power so much that you just melt the target. And that gives you upper limit on what energies you can access. Uh, the great thing about high pins is it just uses a pulsing of the power in order to access a much greater um, instantaneous power. So the graph on the right here shows a typical high pins pulse. So you've got the voltage is applied over a very short period in the range of microseconds. And this is applied at a frequency of say 50 Hertz. So this gives you a very small TV cycle, about 1%. And in doing this, you can see the current that we're accessing is in this um, figure anyway, is 40 amps, but normally this can access current in the hundreds of amps. And this allows you to generate a very high density plasma and increase the electron density. So here is the system we have at Curtin. We've got a uh, chamber and the controls, which is essentially just a DC magnetron sputtering system. And this other bit here is our, um, the, next, the, the large piece next to it is the power supply. And it just uses these large capacitor banks to um, access a, a really high pulse. So, and because of the short duty cycle, um, this power supply runs just on normal uh, single phase power. So you can really just use a high pin system by, create a high pin system by adding this sort of power supply to any normal DC system. Um, it's got some nice design features with our chamber. Okay, so we have multiple configurations of the magnetron. We also have two magnetrons, which allow co-sputtering so that you could make um, different multi-layer materials or you can um, mix two materials to make some sort of carbide perhaps. Um, our previous work looked at something you call mixed mode sputtering. So here um, we were interested in carbon materials and as they are hard to ionize, even with a high pin system, we needed to go a little bit further, which is where we intentionally caused arcing in our system in order to increase the ionization fraction. So you see the little graph of it shows where the arc in, um, initiates. We control the arc using a short pulse, so we only let it um, arc for a short period of time, and using that we were able to increase the ionization fraction. Um, our current project is looking at hydrogen embrittlement, so there's a growing industry of hydrogen energy, um, that, which is going to require a lot of pipeline, but those pipelines are typically um, susceptible to embrittlement by hydrogen. We would like to try and solve this by depositing a film onto the steel to reduce the hydrogen permeability. So high films allows us to test a range of different films, uh, you know, from tetrahedral amorphous carbon, multi-layered sandwich films, uh, carbides and alloys. Uh, here is an example of a film that um, was demonstrated to reduce the permeability of hydrogen using amorphous carbon. So that's an interesting avenue to explore. We ha currently are working with a, a group at, another group at Curtin, um, using this um, uh, hydrogen testing system. So one side is under vacuum, one side is under um, hydrogen pressure. And we will deposit uh, films onto these um, stainless steel tablets and test how much the hydrogen can get through. So that's a, the current work we're doing, but um, there are numerous applications, obviously, for a high film style technology. Thank you. And here's a lovely picture of the research group. Thank you much for your presentation. Any questions? And I'm checking the app. Uh, Nels uh, Ross is asking, arcing in sputter chambers is often associated with particle generation and deposition. In your hybrid uh, HI PIMS, arc deposition, are particles a concern that you have measured and controlled for? Yeah, that's a good question. So um, that's exactly right. One of the reasons you don't want um, arcing is because it's it leads to a runaway current and it essentially explodes a small area of the target. Uh, so the way we reduce that or totally eliminate it, ideally, is by controlling the arc. So by setting either um, a limit on the, an upper limit on the current 
or a, a limit on the length of the poles, we're able to control how long the arc um, goes for. And in that way, we stop it before it becomes something that causes a small melting and, and the ejection of macro particles. So that was something that we tested for, and it is included in one of the many papers we published on this mixed mode for our group. Total elimination, I like that. Yeah. I mean, that's obviously the idea. Great right words and yeah. confident words, I like the confidence. Thank you very much.